بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان استقى الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته so brothers uh, continuing from uh, last week's lesson uh, we finished uh, the first section uh, where the sheikh was explaining uh, the four points which you can refer back to the previous lessons for that not to delay ourselves um, I apologize I missed a section out uh, from uh, from the book I thought it was in the footnotes my mistake uh, it's over here number 13 so I'll go through that now and inshallah <clears throat> I will then uh, continue with uh, where the sheikh had left off so the sheikh mentioned he says al bukhari so he mentions um al bukhari and he's mentioning uh, al bukhari as you know Uh, the sheikh who authored Sahih al-Bukhari, the hadith book, the famous hadith book, yeah? So he, he mentions al-Bukhari and we'll, we'll, we'll see why he mentions uh, uh, sheikh al-Bukhari, uh, rahimahullah, or al-Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah. So he says al-Bukhari, huwa al-Imam Muhammad ibn Ismail ibn Ibrahim al-Bukhari, nisbatun ila Bukhara, baldatun fil mashriq, or fil mashriq, imam ahlul hadith, وجبل الحفظ رحم الله صاحب الصحيح الذي هو اصح الكتب بعد كتاب الله so in that paragraph there that we just said so he mentions al bukhari says al bukhari he is the imam muhammad ibn ismail ibn ibrahim al bukhari uh, and al bukhari is an inscription to uh, the place where he was born where he's from uh, bukhara uh, which i believe it's um, uh in the turkic countries around uzbekistan turkmenistan kazakhstan around this area so this is where uh, this uh, great sheikh was from uh and he mentions um that this is an imam of the ahl al hadith so imam of hadith and a mountain in memorization he was absolute mountain in memorizing he memorized the quran he memorized all these ahadith you know thousands and thousands and thousands hundreds of thousands of a hadith with the chains of narration so you can imagine the you know what a great imam and you know a great blessing that uh, imam al bukhari had you know so um uh, and then the sheikh mentions he says sahib al sahih so um he is the uh, author of what we mentioned earlier on is author, author of uh, as sahih al bukhari right so we're all aware of that book anyway so we don't need to go into too much detail and then the sheikh mentions an important point here which uh, we most of us will be aware of is good to remind ourselves it says that uh, the book al bukhari the hadith book al bukhari uh, as sahih al bukhari sorry it's the most you know after the quran it is the most authentic book after the quran so it's a consensus is relied upon the muslims all the ahadith in this book there's no problem with them at all and that's the consensus of all the scholars of hadith and the scholars in general yeah so uh, the shaykh continues says qawluhu al ilm qabl al qawli wal amal li an al amal la yanfa'u illa idha kana mabniyan ala ilm amma al amal al mabni ala jahl fa innahu la yanfa'u sahibuhu bal yakunu wabalan wa dalala alayhi yawm al qiyamah fala budda an yuqaddima ta'allum al ilm so what the sheikh mentions here so the reason why he uh, why the uh, the sheikh sheikh saleh fawzan was explaining the book why he mentions al bukhari here the benefit is because uh, in uh, one of the chapters uh, in sahih al bukhari it's it's called al ilm qabl al qawl wal amal so knowledge before speech and action and this is tied in with what we were discussing uh, from all the lessons before this lesson so the previous lesson this is what we've been discussing especially knowledge and action you know acting upon it so um this is the point and um the sheikh mentions that so if you uh, act upon knowledge 
then you have a firm foundation. But if you act without knowledge, and you, so therefore you're acting upon ignorance, then you, you're going to be upon corruption and misguidance. And you'll be, and, 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 and that's what you'll be upon on the Yom al Qiyamah. So he goes, so he says, therefore it's incumbent that we uh, bring knowledge first. So, so we kind of advance that. We bring that first. We seek knowledge. We learn before we act, before we say anything, and before we do anything with our limbs, before we say anything with our tongues. We uh, seek knowledge first. So we're upon a firm foundation. And that we're act we're speaking upon knowledge, and we are acting upon knowledge. Uh, so then the Sheikh Kutun says, "Qawluhu wa dalil." So he says, and his speech and the evidence uh, for what we're talking about. He says, "Ala hadi tarjama qawluhu taala faalam anhu la ilaha illa Allah wa astaghfir li dhambik heithu bada abil ilm." Wa qawluhu taala wa astaghfir hada huwa al-amal fa bada subhanahu bil ilm qabla al-amal li anna al-amal إذا كان على جهن فإنه لا ينفع صاحبه فيبدأ الإنسان بالعلم أولا ثم يأمل بما علمه هذا هو الأساس. So then uh, the Sheikh mentions and what's the evidence? The evidence is the Quran ayah which we mentioned in a previous lesson. If you remember, we'll mention it. We've read it here and it says so. Know that he, uh, the one that has no right to be uh, worshipped in truth except Allah, and seek uh, forgiveness for your sins. So then the Sheikh says that if you look at this ayah, what's mentioned, what does Allah say first? It says, So know, learn, be upon knowledge. Started with knowledge before the ending of the ayah, which is, and seek forgiveness for your sins. So that's an action, isn't it? So you can see here, what the Sheikh is saying, you can see here that Allah has mentioned to know first, learn, know, be upon knowledge, then do, then act. Right? And the Sheikh just mentions again to us here, at the end, in, in this paragraph, this paragraph, last paragraph here, he says that, uh, so, for example, if uh, you acted without knowledge, then you're upon ignorance, and you acted upon ignorance, then it will not benefit you. And so, therefore, it's important to begin, that the insan or the person, he begins with knowledge first, before he acts. And he says, and this is the foundation, which we've established as well from what the Sheikh has mentioned to us. So um, then we uh, start a new chapter now. So the second treatise, Al Risala to Thaniya to Thalathu Masaili, Thalathu Masaili in Yajibu al al Muslimi, Ta'alumuha, Wal Amalu Biha. So uh, that one is, so it says here the second treatise or the second letter, uh, which, was, uh, which we're going to read through, it says three uh, affairs that we're going to discuss the obligatory upon every Muslim. That he has knowledge of it, that he learns it, and he acts upon it, that what he's learned. So the Shaykh continues and he says, he mentions this, he says, I'lam, I'lam rahimakallah, annahu yajibu ala kulli muslim wa muslimatin ta'allamu thalati hadhi al-masail wa l-amalu bihinna. So that just explains what we've read from the title. So the Shaykh, the original author says, I'lam rahimakallah, no, may Allah have mercy upon you. So, uh, uh, the Sheikh is saying no to learn. So we know from the previous lessons that when when we're commanded with something, when somebody says no, learn, we know that something, that that which comes after it is important. So we give it attention. And we give our full attention to what's going to be said after that. So the Sheikh says that, then he says, may Allah have mercy upon you. He says that it is obligatory upon every male Muslim and female Muslim that they learn these three Masail or these three affairs and therefore act by them as well and act upon them. So the Sheikh continues and he says, let's get the right page here on my other book. Yeah, here we go uh, in my other book. Okay, that's fine. So the Sheikh says, Qawluhu i'alam hadhi al-kalimatu qulna fi ma sabak innaha kalimatun yu'ta biha lil-ihtimam biha abima ba'daha wa ma'naha uh, so then the Sheikh explains that he says, What does I'alam mean or to know? So the command, let's just use English to know. What does to know mean or to learn? Um, so he says, This is a word uh, which we already discussed before in a previous lesson. And he says, It is a word that, that comes with it great importance or that which is said after 
after it or that which follows it is to be given great importance and then he says and it means to learn to understand and to be firm upon that what, what you've learned that you have clear belief in it that it's true and correct now the shaykh continues and he says qawluhu rahimakallah hadha duaun laka bir rahma wa hadha aydan kama sabaqa fi anna al muallima yanbaghi an yatalattaf ma ma al mutallim wa an yad'u lahu wa yarghabahu fa inna hadha min a'zami wasail al ta'lim wa la yanbaghi lahu an yuqabil al mutallim bil qaswa wa shiddah wal ghilda لأن هذا ينفر عن العلم ثم هذا ينفر عن العلم ثم هذا أيضا يدل على النصح من الشيخ رحمه الله وأنه يريد وأنه يريد النصيحة والمنفعة والتوجيه السديد. So in this paragraph, in this paragraph here, the Sheikh says, and he mentions the Sheikh explaining the book. Sheikh Salih Fawzan he mentions, he says. That the original, the author says, Rahimakallah, may Allah have mercy upon you. So he explains, he says to us, this is a supplication to you, to the reader. Bir Rahma, with, with mercy, you know, asking Allah to have mercy upon you. And it's also what uh, we discussed before. Right? And he says that that the teacher, it's, in, it's incumbent upon the teacher to be soft, to be nice, to be soft, to be approachable. To the student, and that he calls, he, he makes supplication for him. You know that he makes supplication, like in this case where the Sheikh has made supplication for us. We read in the book; he's made supplication for us. You know, as soon as we hear that, we're going to be happy. You know, we're going to be you know happy, and you know it's something that you know when we hear that, we're pleased. You know, and it brings us closer to the teacher. Then the Sheikh says, indeed, that this is from the greatest uh, ways of. Of teaching is from the greatest ways of being able to teach, you know, to get the message across, and therefore it's in, incumbent that the uh, that that the um, that the teacher, the one who's teaching, isn't uh, being harsh, being harsh, and being severe with the students. Doesn't have that attitude because that attitude then it causes the students or whoever is there who wants to learn to run away. They won't come back. They'll turn their backs and they're gone. So it's important. And then uh, that's an important principle the Sheikh mentions. And he also says then, he says that this is also, he also points us towards or, or leads us to uh, advice from the Sheikh. Uh, may Allah have mercy upon him. Uh, that he wants, uh, he wants advice. He wants, uh, he wants to advise us. He wants to benefit us. And he wants to guide us to that or, or direct us to that which is good. And beneficial for us. So then the Sheikh continues, and he says, he says, and قوله أنه يجب. So he says, الوجوب معروف عند الأصوليين والواجب هو الشيء الذي لا بد منه وقد عرفه الأصوليين بأنه ما يثاب فاعله ويعاقب تاركه. وأصل الوجوب في اللغة الثبوت والاستقرار يقال وجب كذا أي ثبت واستقر قال تعالى في البدن فإذا وجبت جنوبها أي سقطت على الأرض واستقرت ميتة ميتة بعد تذكيتها أو بعد تذكيتها فكلوا منها وعطيعوا. So we're going to that bit more detail because we'll go to the Quran translation as well. So the Sheikh says here, he says, and his speech, أنه يجب, and that it is obligatory. So the Sheikh is going to explain that to us now. What does he mean by that is obligatory? He says, uh, an obligation is well known. We all know what obligation means. And it's also well known in terms of from the religious point of view uh, to the uh, usuliin or the ones who uh, teach and learn the foundations of the deen. Uh, that uh, if, if something's obligated upon, if a thing is obligated, or we're obligated with the thing, then uh, it's a must. It means it's a must. It must be done. Uh, 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 for example, uh, and it's, so he says uh, that the Usulin, um, or those scholars, they basically 
have said that, or they come up with the definition uh, uh, of the following, that uh, whoever, whoever acts upon an obligation, then he is rewarded by the act, acting upon it. And whoever leaves off an obligation, he is, a, he commits a sin and is punishable by it, punished by it, or punishable by it, but commits a sin. So that's what an obligation is. You leave it off, then you sin and you are you, you are punishable. If you carry it out, you are rewarded. Uh, and that is the foundation of, of, of what an obligation is. And he also mentions in, in the language, from a linguistic point of view, in the language, in the Arabic language, what does it mean? Um, it means to be firm and to be, uh, you know, in one place, to firm, not move, to be firm. I think that's the best English word we could probably use. Um, uh, and it says, it is said, wajaba kada is, uh, you know, uh, wajaba kada, he just give an example of something being firm and it stays where it is and doesn't move. And then the Sheikh mentions the Quran, I will read the whole ayah. So if you go to the Quran, this is from Surah Al Hajj, uh, verse. 36 so if we go to surah al-hajj verse 36 let's just read the whole thing so we understand it, what al-budn means as well so we read the whole ayah wal budna ja'alnaha lakum min sha'iri llahi lakum fiha khair fadhkuru isma llahi alayha sawaf fa idha wajabat junubuha fakulu minha wa ati'u wa afwan wa at'imu al-qani'a wal mu'tar so if we read the translation of the whole ayah, we will understand it better for ourselves. And, and the Buddhan, cows, oxen or camels driven to be offered as sacrifices by the pilgrims at the sanctuary of Mecca. We have made for you as among the symbols of Allah, therein you have much good. So mention the name of Allah over them when they are drawn up in lines for sacrifice. Then... When they are down on their sides after slaughter, eat thereof and feed the beggar who does not ask, and the beggar who asks. Thus have we made them subject to you that you may be grateful. So you can understand the context there from uh, the translation there of the ayah, of the whole ayah from Surah Al-Aj verse uh, 36. You can refer to yourselves in your own time as well if you want to review that again. So the Shaykh um, continues and he says, فَقَوْلُهُ يَجِبُ يَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ الْأَمْرَ لَيْسَ مِنْ بَابِ الْإِسْتِحْبَابِ مَنْ شَاءَ فَعَلَىٰ وَمَنْ شَاءَ تَرَكَىٰ بَلِ الْأَمْرُ مِنْ بَابِ الْإِلْزَامِ مِنَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَالَىٰ لَيْسَ هَذَا الْإِجَابِ مِنْ قِبْلِ الشَّيْخِ وَإِنَّمَا هُوَ مِنْ قِبْلِ اللَّهِ يَزَّ وَجَلْ فِيمَا أَنزَلَ فِي الْكِتَابِ وَسُنَّةِ مِنْ إِلْزَامِ الْعِبَادِ فِي هَذِي الْمَسَائِلِ So then the Shaykh says, so it's obligatory, uh, uh, or the word ob obligation or obligatory, he says it, it directs us to uh, the affair or a command, a command. It's a command uh, that uh, is not from uh, that which is recommended. So it's not something that's recommended uh, where we can say, well, um, if I feel like doing it, I'll do it. And if I feel like I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. Because there are things that are recommended, which you can leave off and you get a reward for doing it but if you leave off you won't be sinful for it so the sheikh is making a contrast is contrasting here uh, between that and and what uh, obligatory is as we all understand so it's obligatory it's a command that we we can't leave off like that like if it was recommended it's not recommended it's it's uh, it's uh, ilzam so basically uh from allah it's not from the sheikh that allah has um uh, commanded us with this as an obligation and we must stick to it and do it um and so, and then the Sheikh says that this is not from what the uh, original author is not from him, but rather it's from Allah, this command. And in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah um, uh, in, in these affairs. So the Sheikh continues and he says, uh, يَجِبُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ وَمُسْلِمَةٍ كُلُّ مُسْلِمٍ وَمُسْلِمَةٍ أَيْ يَجِبُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْفَىٰ من المسلمين سواء كانوا أحرارا أو عبيدا أو ذكورا أو إناثا لأن المرأة تشارك الرجل في كثير من الواجبات إلا ما خصه الدليل بالرجال فإنه يختص بهم مثل وجوب صلاة الجماعة في المساجد 
وصلات وصلات الجمعة ومثل زيادة القبور فإنها خاصة بالرجال ومثل الجهاد في سبيل الله فإنه خاص بالرجال. So then the Sheikh says, and he, meant, and he quotes the original author, "Yajibu ala kulli Muslim wa Muslima." So he's breaking this down for us. So ob- obligatory, uh, an obligation. It's an obligation upon every male and female Muslim. I.e., it's obligatory upon every man and woman, every male and female from the Muslimin, whether uh, they be free, free men and free women or servants or uh, you know uh, a male or female he's given the example already uh, because he says because the woman she shares and partakes uh, 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 in many of the things that the man does from that which has been obligated upon man and woman from the Muslims uh, except uh, that which has been only specified for the men so when uh, um, and and there's some evidences for that uh, for where things are only particular to men. So the Sheikh mentions it to us as well. He says, indeed, uh, there are those uh, acts and deeds and actions that are only particular to men. He says, for example, like the obligation of praying salat in the jama'ah when you've been called, and when uh, 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 and and praying the salatul jum'ah praying the Friday prayer and going out to masjid and praying the Friday prayer and, for example, visiting uh, the graves. For example, these are all specific to men, just as some examples. And he also uh, gives strikes another example for us and he says, um, uh, and the likes of jihad uh, in the path of Allah, for indeed all of this is specific to uh, the men. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, فَمَا دَلَّ الدَّلِيلُ عَلَىٰ عَلَىٰ اخْتِصَاسِهِ بِالرِّجَالِ فَإِنَّهُ يَخْتَصُ بِيهِمْ وَإِلَّا فَإِنَّ الْأَصْلَىٰ أَنَّ الرِّجَالَ وَالنِّسَاءَ سَوَاءٌ فِي الْوَاجِبَاتِ وَتَجَنُّبَ الْمُحَرَّمَاتِ وَسَائِرُ الْتَكَالِيفِ وَمِنْ ذَلِكَ أَنَّ تَعَلُّمَ الْعِلْمَ وَاجِبْ أَنَّ تَعَلُّمَ الْعِلْمِ واجب على الرجال والنساء لأنه لا يمكن عبادة الله جل وعلا التي خلقنا من أجلها إلا بتعلم العلم الذي نعرف به إبادة إبادة ربنا أو نعرف به إبادة ربنا فهذا واجب على الرجال والنساء أن يتعلموا أمور دينهم لا سيما أمور لقيدة. So then the Sheikh says, he says, so, so the evidence or what drags us that shows the, that specific to the men. So we've, we've discussed what's specific to the men. But then the Sheikh mentioned, he says, but, but the foundation is that when it comes to obligations, or obligatory acts that men and women in general, in generally, generally speaking, uh, are equal in terms of carrying out their obligations that Allah has commanded them with. For example, the Sheikh says, for example, you know, their obligations uh, staying away from uh, all that which is haram, and the rest of uh, or, uh, the other things that we've been uh, ordained to do um, and to follow. So the Sheikh says, and so from that, uh, or from uh, and, and from that, then it's it's important to learn. Uh, to, uh, it's wajib to learn and to seek knowledge for both men and women. So this is the point that's being made. Both men and women is obligatory upon them to seek knowledge of the Deen. Uh, it's not possible. Uh, that you uh, worship Allah Jalla Wala uh, and fulfill you, uh, our purpose uh, except with knowledge. We can't fulfill our purpose except that we upon clear knowledge of what's required of us and that we know what to do and how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and this is obligatory upon the men and the women. It's an obligation for the men and the women. And it's important to learn, uh, as mentioned here, um, and it's an obligation for us. Especially the Sheikh mentions here, so learning the important parts of our deen, especially our aqidah, our belief, we need to be on on the belief that the Prophet or the Sahaba were upon. We need to be clear on these matters. We live in a time where people actually don't really know Allah, 
and they go they go explain away things and they they take away things and they add things and you know there's all these things going on which we'll cover later on um uh, which distorts the aqida uh, and actually encompasses uh, parts of atheism which we need to stay away from so the sheikh says he says he continues and he says qawluhu thalathu masailin at-ta'allum huna ma'nahu at-talaqi an al-ulama'i wal-hifz wal-fahm wal-idrak hadha huwa at-ta'allum laysa al-murad mujarrad qira'at aw mutala'at hurratan kama yusammuna hadha laysa ta'alluman inma at-ta'allum huwa at-talaqi an ahli al-'ilm ma hifz dhalika wa fahmihi wa idrakihi tamaman hadha huwa at-ta'allum as-sahih أما مجرد القراءة والمطالعة فإنها لا تكفي في التعلم وإن وإن كانت مطلوبة وفيها فائدة لكنها لا تكفي ولا يكفي الاقتصار عليها. So the Sheikh mentions a very important thing here, and we need to understand it, and it's a reminder for all of us as well. So the Sheikh says, and he says, uh, the original author says, three affairs or three مسائل. He mentions. So learning here, it means it means at talaki, and in Arabic at talaki says at talaki and ulama. The Sheikh says taking knowledge from the ulama, the people of knowledge, then memorizing and understanding and encompassing and being aware of what you've learned. He says this is learning. This is what learning is taking from the scholars. And then he makes an important point, and he says not not just reading books. Not just reading away only and researching yourself and reading away. If you just do that, that's not learning. When it comes to uh, uh, from the Islamic meaning of learning, no, it needs to be taken from the scholars. It, first of all, there's no harm in reading. So the Sheikh continues to explain this to us. It says, so it's, you don't just freely read, freely reading and freely researching on your own. No, this is not learning. It needs to be taken from the scholars. And so the Sheikh says rather. Learning it is taking from the people of knowledge, memorizing that what uh, that what they've said, understanding what they've said, and um, uh, and encompassing and being aware of what they've said completely. He says this is learning. This is the correct way of learning. As for just you know reading on your own and researching on your own, uh, that does not suffice you or doesn't suffice. It's not sufficient to, for learning. And even if it was something that was sought. He says, and and in it, and even if it was sought, and in it was a uh, benefit, even though there's benefit in that, it's not sufficient, and it's not sufficient to just um, sort of enshrine yourself upon just reading and focus yourself, uh, put all your focus on just reading and researching and not taking from the ulama and not taking from the people of knowledge. This is what the sheikhs mentioned. So he continues. The sheikh says, "Wala ya juzu." So he says, "Wala yajuzu atatlamaz ala al-kutub kama hu al-waqi' fi hada al-waqt, liyan atatlamaz ala ala al-kutub khatir jiddan. Yhsulu minhu mafasid wa ta wa 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 taalim azaru min al-jahl wa taalim azaru min al-jahl, li an al-jahl yaqifu anhu jahl wa yaqifu inda hadhi, lakin al-mutaalim." يرى أنه عالم فيحل ما حرم الله ويحرم ما حل الله ويتكلم ويقول على الله بلا علم فالمسألة خطيرة جدا. So the Sheikh says you shouldn't, uh, you know, make your books, your teachers, or you become a student of a book. You shouldn't be like that. As he mentioned earlier on, he also mentions that because. He says the affair, which which this affair of people just reading books, and and reading explanations, reading books on their own, without the guidance of of a scholar, uh, even though like he mentioned, those are benefit is not enough to uh, seek knowledge properly. So it must be taken from the scholars and and, and their works, the scholars of the Sunnah, of course. Not any old scholar. So you have to be aware of that as well these days. That there's a, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Uh, that the mo- uh, the most of what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fears for his ummah are the the imams 
or the ulama that uh, misguide people. So from the Prophet Sallallahu own words there that, you know, we have to be aware of this as well. And so if you like this, we're learning the foundations and Alhamdulillah, it gives us a compass. We can gu- we can use it and guide us, inshallah, uh, and always be upon the truth, inshallah. So um, so the Sheikh says that just sticking to books only, it's a, it's a very dangerous affair. Even though it may have benefit, it's a dangerous affair. And he says, why? so why? We'll, we'll ask a question, why is it dangerous? He says, because what happens is the person who's, who's learning, he takes some knowledge and then he's, he becomes in a state where he thinks, oh, hang on a second. You know, I know, I know this, I've read this, I know this, I understood this, etc. And he'll start making that which Allah has made haram, he'll make it halal. That which Allah has made halal, he'll make it haram. This is not upon clear knowledge, but he thinks he is. This is a trap, it's a dangerous trap. The Sheikh says, as, whereas somebody who is ignorant, at least they know their limit. They, they know where to stop. The person who's ignorant, they know where to stop. They know they're ignorant. So there's just contrasting between those two examples. And so um, people in, in that situation where when they stick to books, uh, they're not taking from the scholars and having the proper understanding and context of what they actually are reading, then which leads them to, uh, was uh, leads them uh, upon a false understanding and a corrupted understanding. And then, you know, that's a very dangerous uh, position to be in. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, um, uh, we go to the next part here and he continues in the Sheikh says, in, to read the title, Al-Imanu bi anna allaha falakana wa razaqana wa lam yatrukna hamala al-ula anna allaha khalaqana wa razaqana wa lam yatrukna hamala. So the Sheikh continues, says, Fal-ilmu la yu'khaz min al-kutub mubashatan inam al-kutub wa sa'il amma haqiqatun haqiqatul ilmi fa innaha tu'khadu an al-ulama jilan ba'da jil. So the Sheikh just finishes off there what we were mentioning. They says, so therefore, uh, knowledge isn't taken from books directly and only like that. Uh, rather, it's uh, 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 the books are a, a way for us to, you know, or to help us to learn. However, we take knowledge from the ulama. Generation after generation, we take knowledge from them. And that's the right way. Uh, and he says, and obviously the books are just uh, 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 a stepping stone and a way and to connect to the scholars, of course, the books have their benefit, but they have the limit as well on their own. And the Sheikh mentioned that. And then uh, we continue uh, here and the Sheikh says, So I'll just go back here because the book's broken down in a different, slightly different way. So we've reached a different section now. Uh, Al-Iman. So we already read this. So Iman, having belief that Allah created us uh, create, created us, he provide, provided for us, provides for us, and that he did not leave us uh, without a purpose, abandoned, goalless, without an aim, without a desire, with, without a purpose. So this is what we're going to discuss now, the Sheikh's going to discuss. قول هو الأولى أن الله خلقنا أو أن الله خلقنا أي أوجدنا من العدم فأوجدنا من العدم فنحن من قبل أو من قبل أن يخلقنا لم نكن شيئا كما قال تعالى هل أتى على الإنسان حين من الدهر لم يكن شيئا مذكورا الإنسان وقال سبحانه قال كذلك قال ربك هو علي هين وقد خلقتك من قبل ولم تك شيئا سورة مريم بستعل كان الإنسان قبل أن يخلق ليس بشيء والذي أوجده وخلقه هو الله عز وجل قال تعالى أم خلقوا من غير شيء أم هم الخالقون سورة تور فاستا إي فايف so um, the sheikh mentions here that the first point with regards to uh, believing in that Allah created us brought us into existence provided for us and did not and that we believe that he did not leave us uh, except with a purpose then the first point here is that Allah created us, i.e. He brought us into existence from nothing. We were nothing. We didn't exist at all. We were, we were not there. We were not there. We would, it was just blank, nothing there. Allah brought us into existence. We believe that. And that Allah created us from nothing. As Allah said in the Quran from Surah Al-Insan, so if we read these ayahs that we just read there, if you get the quotations, uh, the translations, 
So, <coughs> excuse me, let's go to verse 1 of Surah Al-Insan, and which we already read in Arabic. Has there not been over man a period of time when he was nothing to be mentioned? So absolutely we were nothing. We were not, a man was nothing and was brought into existence by, by Allah. The next ayah also here, which is from Surah to, uh, Surah to Maryam. So let's go to Surah to Maryam now. And we have a look at the translation from there. Verse 9. He said, so it will be. Your Lord says, it is easy for me. Certainly I have created you before when you had been nothing. So that's another proof for us to take from. And then, uh, and then the next ayah uh, from Surah to Tur, verse 35. So if we go to Surah Tur, verse 35, and we read verse 35. Were they created by nothing or were they themselves the creators? So Allah's channel is there. So the proofs have been established there for us, uh, for what the Shaykh has, is saying, and it's clear. Then the Shaykh continues and he says, Oluhu. وَرَزَقْنَا لَمَّا كَانَ نَحْتَاجُ إِلَى الرِّزْقِ إِلَى الطَّعَامِ وَالشَّرَابِ وَالْمَلَابِسِ وَالْمَسَاكِ وَالْمُرَاكِبِ وَالْمَصَالِحِ عَلِمَ سُبْحَانَهُ حَاجَتَنَا فَسَخَّرَ لَنَا مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ كُلِّهِ لِمَصَالِحِنَا لِمَصَالِحِنَا مِنْ أَجْلِ بَقَائِنَا عَلَى قَيْدِ الْحَيَاةِ وَمِنْ أَجْلِ أَنْ نَسْتَعِينَ أَنْ نَسْتَعِينَ بِذَلِكَ عَلَى مَا خُلِقْنَا لِأَجْلِهِ وَهُوَ عِبَادَةُ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى So then we're looking at all the part about provisions that Allah provided for us. So that, um, as the Sheikh mentions here, so he goes, when, uh, when, when we required provisions, for example, like food, drink, you know, shelter, um, uh, clothing, and other than that, Allah already knew this with regards to our needs. So He made the earth, that which is in with the with the skies and the earth, subservient for our benefit, so that we could remain on the earth. We can remain and remain upon life. We could we we could live and maintain that. Uh, for the reason that, uh, for the main reason, the reason for Allah created it. So the whole point of all these things that we made subsaying for us, why? The main reason is that, Al for the reason that Allah created this for, is to worship Him alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the shaykh continues and he says, قَوْلُهُ وَلَمْ يَتْرُكْنَا هَمَلَا الْهَمَلْ هُوَ الشَّيْءَ الْمُهْمَلَ الْمُتْرُوكَ الَّذِي لَا يُؤْبَى بِهِ فَاللَّهُ خَلَقْنَا وَرَزَقْنَا لِحِكْمَتِ ما يعني خلقنا عبثا ولا سدى قال تعالى أفحسبتم أنما خلقناكم عبثا عبثا وأنكم إلينا لا ترجعون وقال سبحانه أيحسب الإنسان أن يترك سدى ألم يكن نطفة من 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 ني يمنى ثم كان علقة فخلق فسوى وقال وما خلقنا السماء والأرض وما بينهما باطلا ذلك ظن الذين كفروا فوين للذين كفروا من النار. So we just go back there a second. So, so the Sheikh continues and he says here, and that we weren't created um, without a purpose, just left deserted, wandering. Just go where you want, wherever you want. Do what you want. There's no purpose to life. We weren't created like that. And the Sheikh says we weren't just left there, abandoned. Rather, we were we were created for. It was a wisdom, wisdom. We were created. And the Sheikh mentions um, a few ayahs from the Quran, which we're going to go through, which we've read in Arabic. We'll go through it now, and we'll look at the translations. The first ayah is a uh, ayah 115 from Surah Al-Mu'minin, Surah Al-Mu'minun. Uh, so if you go to Al-Mu'minun, verse 115. Did you think that we had created you in play without any purpose and that you would not be brought back to us? And the second ayah here that's uh, mentioned is from Surah Al-Qiyamah, verse 36 to 38. So let's have a look at that as well. Verse 36 to 38. Does man think that he will be left 
neglected without being punished or rewarded for the obligatory duties enjoined by his Lord Allah on him? Was he not a nufta, mixed male and female discharge of semen poured forth? Then he became an alaqa, a clot. Then Allah shaped and fashioned him in due proportion. Then the next ayah, the final one which is mentioned over here, uh, that we had read up to the point where we had read Surah Al-Sa'd, Surah Al-Sa'd, and that's verse 27. So if you go to Surah Al-Sa'd, verse 27, and read that. And we created not the heaven and the earth and all that is between them without purpose. That is the consideration of those who disbelieve. Then woe to those who disbelieve in Islamic monotheism from the fire. So we can see there, we can, we can, that's clear for us to understand. And what the Shaykh has mentioned as well, called solidates what the Shaykh has mentioned. We'll continue. Allahu inna ma khalaqana wa khalaqa lana, khulika lana hadhi al-arzaq wal-imkaniyat li hikmatin azimatin wa ghayatin jalilatin wa hiya an na'budahu subhanahu wa ta'ala wa lam yakhluqna kal baha'im alati khuliqat li masalih al-ibad thumma tamutu wa tazhab li annaha laysat mukallafa wa la ma'mura wa la man hiya inna ma خلقنا لعبادته إنما خلق خلقنا لعبادته كما قال تعالى وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون ما أريد منهم من رزق وما أريد أن يطعمون إن الله هو الرزاق ذو القوة المتين ولم ولم يخلقنا لهذا يخلقنا لهذه الحياة الدنيا فقط نعيش فيها ونصرح ونمرح ونأكل ونشرب و نتواصى فيها وليس بعدها شيء وإنما إنما الحياة مزرعة وسوق للدار الآخرة نتزود فيها بالأعمال الصالحة ثم نموت ونت وننتقل منها ثم نبعث ثم ثم نبعث ثم نحاسب ونجازى بأعمالنا. We'll just stop there for a second. <coughs> so the Sheikh also says. So says Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and he created for us as well these provisions and things that we find around us um, for a great, for a magnificent and a great wisdom and purpose. And that, and that is that we worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala and he didn't, uh, and he didn't create us like the animals, you know, the animals are out there. He didn't create us like the other creatures, animals are out there that were created for, for, uh, for to benefit the, the servants of Allah, like us. To, the animals were created to benefit us. There's a difference. They die and they go, and and also, and because that they, they aren't, um, you know, being they haven't been charged with any duties like we have been, like the mankind and jinn have been charged with, you know, obligations, which, which we've been discussing, obligations and, um, you know, uh, and the prohibitions. The animals, they, they, they don't have that. Now look, they don't follow any commands, nothing like that. They're there just to serve us. And the Sheikh mentions an ayah regarding that our purpose. And if we go to Surat al and read the verses, there are three verses, verse 56 to 58. And I, Allah, created not the jinns and the humans, except they should worship me alone. I seek not any provision from them, i.e. provision for themselves or for my creatures, nor do I ask that they should feed me, i.e. feed themselves or my creatures. Verily, Allah is the all-provider, owner of power, the most strong. So that's clear for us from what we've read. And so... The Shaykh continues and he says, so he says we weren't created uh, for, uh, in this dunya, you know, just to live only in it, just to live, you know, go here and there, be happy, cheerful, eat and drink and do whatever, you know, you want within the sphere of the earth, you know, the world where we live in and that there's nothing after it. And the Shaykh says rather life is a, it's like a farm, it's like um, like a pasture, you know, uh, or it's like a market for the next life. So this is the time of acting and, um, you know, doing good deeds and amounting and amassing good deeds and staying away from all that which is evil and doing that what Allah has commanded us to there uh, to prepare for the next life. And that we, you know, focus on doing righteous deeds in this life um, 
uh, and that from there we will obviously from here then in this world we will die and we'll move to we'll move away from it and to the uh, to the akhirah right to the afterlife then we will be resurrected and we will be account account but then we will be resurrected and then uh, we'll be held to account and then we will be given our due reward depending on what we did in this world with our actions so the shaykh continues and he says hadhihi al ghaya he says this is the purpose so hadhihi al ghaya to من خلق الجن والإنس والدليل على ذلك آيات كثيرة تدل على البعث, البعث والنشور والجزاء والحساب والأقل يدل على هذا فإنه لا يليق بحكمة الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يخلق هذا الخلق الأجيب وأن, يس وأن يسخر هذا الكون لبني آدم ثم, ثم يتركهم يموتون ويذهبون بدون نتيجة هذا عبث فلا بد أن تظهر نتائج هذه الأعمال في الدار الآخرة. So the Sheikh mentions here in this paragraph that uh, he says so this is the purpose that man, jinn and mankind were created for to worship. This is the primary purpose to worship Allah alone. And he says evidence of that, the evidence of that is, uh, or the evidence regarding that are many. We read one, we read a few ayahs here, but there are many. Ayat, many verses in the Quran about regarding this upon you know that uh, when we will be resurrected and we will be taken to Allah on the day of judgment uh, about reward and being held accountable and being given your reward and and uh, Sheikh says that our intellect that Allah has given us you know understands that and uh, and Allah has put that within our in our intellect that we can understand this these 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 uh, occurrences. And then the Sheikh says, uh, and it's not befitting uh, uh, for Allah, you know, um, by His wisdom, by the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, that He creates His creation, right? And, and then, you know, makes all these other things, the universe, and that's, what, that's uh, whatever's within it, um, uh, subservient to a benefit Bani Adam, and then leaves them, they die, and they go, and... Um, without a result, without a purpose, without a result. He says, this is what you call uh, no purpose, just left there, abandoned, no purpose. So he says, so therefore it's incumbent that uh, that uh, that the results, that the results are there, that there's results of the actions in this world that we've, or that what we've done, that there's a result for it. That, uh, the result is either you've done well and you followed what Allah said, and you're rewarded with it, or, or you didn't do well, uh, you'll be in trouble, and you either go to heaven or hell. That's the ultimate thing, really, if you think about it. That's all it is. So the Sheikh mentioned that there's got to be a result. is isn't just you live and then die and that's it, and, or, and then it just goes around in circles over and over again. There's a purpose to life, and that's the wisdom of Allah, from the wisdom of Allah, which we've talked about already anyway. So the Sheikh continues and he says, <clears throat> وَلِهَذَا قَدْ يَكُونُ مِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَفْنِي عُمْرَهُ فِي بَادَةِ اللَّهِ وَفِي طَاعَةِ وَهُوَ فِي فَقْرٍ وَفِي حَاجَةٍ وَفِي فَقْرٍ وَفِي حَاجَةٍ وَقَدْ يَكُونُ مَظْلُومًا مَضْغُوطًا عَلَيْهِ وَمُضَيِّقًا عَلَيْهِ وَلَا يَنَالُ شَيْئًا مِنْ جَزَاءِ عَمَلِهِ فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا وَعَلَى لَقْسِ يَكُونُ مِنَ النَّاسِ كَافِرٌ مُلْحِدٌ شِرِّيرٌ يَصْرَحْ وَيَمْرَحْ فِي هَذِي الْحَيَاةِ وَيَتَنَعَمْ وَيَتَنَعَمْ وَيُعْطَى مَا يَشْتَهِي وَيَرْتَكِبُ مَا حَرَمَ اللَّهِ وَيَظْلِمُ وَيُظْلِمُ الْعِبَادَ وَيَأْتَدِي عَلَيْهِمْ وَيَأْكُلُ أَمْوَالَهُمْ وَيَقْتُلَ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍّ وَيَتَسَلَّطَ وَيَتَسَلَّطَ وَيَتَجَبَّرَ ثُمَّ يَمُوتُ عَلَى حَالِهِ مَا أَصَابَهُ شَيْءٌ مِنَ الْعُقُوبَةِ هَلْ يَلِيقُ بِأَدْلِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَحِكْمَتِهِ أَنْ يَتْرُكَ هَذَا الْمُطِيعَ بِدُونِ جَزَاءٍ وَأَنْ يَتْرُكَ هَذَا الْكَافِرَ بِدُونِ مُجَازَاتٍ هذا مجازات لا يليق بأده سبحانه وتعالى ولذلك جعل دارا أخرى يجازى فيها المحسن بإحسانه والمسيب إساءته 
فتظهر فيها ثمرات الاعمال وتظهر فيها ثمرات الاعمال so let's translate that paragraph so the sheikh says goes, so he says for that reason uh, you'll, you'll, you'll find uh, from the people who uh, spend their life you know in the, in worshiping allah in or being obedient to allah and he may this person this person who's like this who's really good he might be from, in poverty poor and in need and uh, and and you may find this person you know uh, being oppressed and being pressured and uh, and being uh, you know like feeling uh, to be uh, to may uh, to be feel you know feel worried or constrained like this he says and and that in this world he doesn't obtain anything uh, from you know uh, and and from from this and and he says and he says he does not obtain anything uh, of reward in terms of you know whether it be you know earnings or anything like that from is from for his work what he does in this in this dunya so he might not have anything in this dunya physically and and the shaykh then strikes the opposite example and he goes and and the opposite of that there'll be a, from the people a person who is a kafir disbeliever atheist evil you know does whatever he wants you know happy jolly this and the other um uh, lives his life like that you know uh, you can see that he has blessings that he's been given uh, you know and he he, he he receives whatever he desires and he perpetrates all kinds of sins that allah has made haram and he oppresses uh, the servants of allah and he uh, assaults them uh, and uh, physically and verbally and uh, he eats the wealth of the people he kills without uh, uh, he kills people uh, without without haq without being upon or having the right to do so he um, basically overpowers people tries to control them you know uh, and all these kinds of things and then he dies upon this particular hal as you can see the first person was good and the second person is evil so the sheikh says he goes so 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 the uh, sheikh says that he, and obviously he dies and in his life this person the second person that we described in his life of the dunya you know he wasn't held to account you know he received no punishment or nothing so then the sheikh says to us is it befitting uh, uh for the for allah's justice subhanahu wa ta'ala and not from his wisdom that this person uh, that the person who was um uh, obedient right obedient the first example that we, the sheikh gave that he's left without a reward and that he's left uh, and and, that the, and so he's left without a reward in the akhirah and that the um the kafir which we described the second described this uh, the second type of person he commits all these kinds of sins and done all this all this all that all these kinds of evil deeds he did and wasn't held accountable uh, in the dunya do, do, do you think it would be right that allah wouldn't hold him account on the day of judgment in in the in the hereafter for all the all the things that he did he says the sheikh says this does not be fit Allah's justice that the people would just be left like that without reward and his point being that that whatever happens on the dunya that there's an outcome in the akhirah the evil person the kafir the disbeliever the uh, he will get what he deserves the person who's good followed uh, the quran the sunnah followed was a muslim died upon islam he will be rewarded accordingly <clears throat> And so the Sheikh uh, finishes off there. So uh, I think it'll probably be a good time to stop uh, here, inshallah, and uh, we'll continue next week. Ta'ala, we're reaching to an hour again um, and the, because of the, the explanations are quite detailed now with regards to this book. So uh, it's going to take a little bit longer, but inshallah, we benefit. So inshallah, we'll meet again uh, next week, same time, Ta'ala, and we'll, we'll, we'll uh, continue from where we left off. إن شاء الله سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته